let's start with what um what we have in terms of like the the problem i mean give us some of the 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 key issues that we're dealing with when we deal with with student debt in terms of numbers of people yeah okay so just to put some numbers around this right now we are at 1.7 trillion dollars in student debt outstanding that is held by 45 million people um and this is a rapidly growing source of debt in the country the majority of student debt has actually been incurred in the last 10 years now what's important to keep in mind about the student debt issue in this country is that student debt is not the same for everybody and this is this is a fundamental thing that we have to keep in mind which is to say that the majority of student debt is actually held by people that economically at least are doing pretty well so graduate students people that went to private nonprofit colleges um, that uh, you know they got their law degrees they got their medical degrees and they've graduated now with you know six figure debt but they're doing pretty well. That's not to say we shouldn't help those folks out because there are still issues um, with that amount of student debt, but that's a separate issue from um, where a lot of the problems with student debt are, which is for those folks that actually, maybe they have less debt, but they're actually struggling much more to pay it off. One of the counterintuitive things about the student debt issue is that People with lower amounts of debt are often doing worse than people with higher amounts of debt because people with lower amounts of debt, they're those folks that the, are the, the debt didn't pay off, right? So they went to school and either they didn't graduate because they just had to drop out or they went to a predatory for-profit college that used deceptive marketing practices to get them in, load them up with debt and give them an education that they couldn't do anything with. So these are the folks that went through, maybe they got $10,000, $20,000 in debt, but they never got the returns to college. So their wages, um, they're stagnant. Um, they're doing much worse than folks with a BA, but they still have to figure out how to pay off this $10,000, $20,000 in debt. Before we talk about how it's uh, impacting them and their behavior, which is really the center of some of your research here is... Mm -hmm. I want to just um, uh, I want to want to go back to that that a, a couple of questions and get some more broad uh, data on these on these people and 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 the and the dollars we're talking about. Um, when you start when you say the people with the highest amounts of debt are doing okay economically, we're not just talking about revenue. We're talking about revenue relative to the debt that they're carrying in that instance. Um, yes. Give me a sense of like what kind of dollar figures are we talking about for that revenue and what cohort they represent within the universe of college debt holders? Yeah, so basically the first thing to keep in mind is that the returns to college, if you get a BA or get a graduate school, are still overall pretty positive. A person with a bachelor's degree um, will earn about they can expect to earn about $600,000 more over the course of their life than someone without a bachelor's degree. So these folks, even though they're taking on an average of $38,000, $39,000 in debt, which is a high debt load, um, they can usually afford, because they're getting this, what we think of as a wage premium from their bachelor's degree, afford to pay that off. Now, they're still having to make a lot of sacrifices that are, I think, socially suboptimal. They're having to put off things like buying a home, saving for retirement. Um, they're having to maybe take jobs that they don't necessarily want um, because those jobs might pay more, allows them to deal with their, uh, their student loan debt. Um, so this is not an optimal situation. But by and large, like those folks who, who graduate um, from college, for whom college pays off, they tend to be disproportionately white. They tend to be disproportionately high income. Um, and so even though they do struggle, and I, I would never discount those struggles, um, they're better able, the numbers show, to actually manage the existing student debt burden that they have. So 
How much do you represent? I mean, what do they represent? And we should say, first off, right, nobody who gets student debt um, can do so without showing a sufficient need to begin with. Um, obviously, some people are better situated than others. And also, uh, some people have, um, uh, you know, and I think you could argue um, uh, quite easily uh, that uh, f- uh, on, uh, from a racial perspective, some people are better situated to maximize the value of their college, uh, uh, of their college loans than other people because they know other rich people or other people who have graduated college or, or whatnot. Um, but what, what percentage of those people that we're talking about who go and get the maximum are able to get the maximum value out of their college education, uh, even though they may be carrying, you know, 30, 40, 50, $60,000 worth of debt. Um, who, who are those people? A, and then B, I also want to just ask when we talk about, well, I'll save the second question for later. So who, how many of those people represent the 45 million, let's say, who have uh, college debt? So that number I don't have on hand. Um, I would like to, I can, I think I can address this question in a slightly different way, which is to note the people, the percent of people that are struggling here, um, which is to say, and I just, I, you know, I did a lot of background research before we did the study. Um, and one of the things that really struck me is half, 50% of black students who take on student debt are currently in default. That is half are currently in default. So what we can say um, is that for racial and ethnic minorities and, and black students in particular, this is not paying off. Um, and this is this is one of the reasons the student debt um, exacerbates the racial wealth gap and racial inequality. Because I mean, you, you you were dead on, Sam, when you said, you know, for some people, like it's actually a fairly straight shot to maximize the returns of college and of student debt. If you are typically white and higher income. You have to take on less debt. Um, you weren't targeted by these predatory schools, um, and you did not enter into a racially discriminatory labor market. Um, if you are a, a racial or ethnic minority, um, your family just historically, due to many, many reasons, was lower income, so you had to take on more debt. Um, due to deregulation, you were um, oftentimes preyed upon through deceptive practices by predatory for-profit institutions that did not deliver a quality education. Um, And so you graduated with more student debt into a labor market that actually pays you less. You're more, you're, it's harder to find a job. It's harder to find a good job. The, just, just one point on this, the, the standard understanding is that for a black person to earn the same as a white person, the black person has to have a master's degree, whereas the white person has to have a BA. So this is this is one of the ways and one of the reasons why we see such a struggle um, for those racial and ethnic minorities and black households in particular. My understanding too, when we talk about default rates, is and maybe and, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but that the uh, class of 2004 are apparently at this point uh, defaulting on their federal loans at 40 percent uh, rate at this point. Hi, I'm Sam Cedar. You can watch the rest of this interview and more on our Peacock show, which streams at 5 p.m. weekdays on The Choice from Peacock TV.